Hi, I'm Mr. New Jersey. I'm making this video to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the greatest TV show ever set in my home state, HBO's The Sopranos. Here's a fair warning. This video contains spoilers up through the end of the show, so if you haven't seen the show yet, you should really be watching that right now rather than watching me. The Sopranos, which first aired in January 1999, follows the story of Tony Soprano, a high-ranking member of a New Jersey Mafia family. The show examines conflict between the different Mafia families, conflict within individual Mafia families, conflict between Mafia families and civilians, and conflict between the Mafia and the law. But perhaps the most important conflict showcased in The Sopranos is that within Tony Soprano's actual biological family and how his life of crime, lies, cheating, and violence put an immense strain on his family life. Throughout the show, Tony Soprano is expertly portrayed by the late New Jersey native actor James Gandolfini. One particularly great plotline is Tony's relationship with his mother, Livia. In season one, Tony always tries to be a good son, attempting to set Livia up in a nice nursing home, regularly visiting her, and constantly bringing her gifts to make her life more comfortable. But Livia is always cold, rude, and emotionally absent. The audience sees that over the course of the season, Lydia tries to manipulate Tony's Uncle Junior into killing Tony. After Tony finds out what happened and dramatically confronts Lydia in the season finale, he then has to spend subsequent seasons and years of his life trying to come to terms with what his mother has done to him. I think part of what makes The Sopranos such a great show is that it effectively walks the line that a lot of early crime dramas struggled with, both humanizing those engaged with criminal activity, but also refusing to romanticize the criminal activity. We see how much Tony loves his family and how he adores animals such as ducks that end up in his pool. These acts of love remind us that he is a human with the potential for good in him who ended up going down the wrong path. Yet we also see Tony committing heinous acts, all the way up to repeated cold-blooded murders. These remind us that what Tony does isn't in any way justifiable. Another fantastic innovation of The Sopranos is its examination of Tony's own psyche and depression through the lens of his therapy sessions with Dr. Melfi. Putting your protagonist under the viewing light provides immense insight into who he is, how he thinks, and what drives and troubles him that not a lot of shows match. One controversial and yet necessary to mention aspect of The Sopranos is its ending which occurs in Holston's ice cream parlor. The scene features dual emotions, on the one hand showing a pleasant moment where Tony is eating with his family, but on the other hand showing a suspicious character entering the parlor, possibly to shoot Tony. The tension of the scene keeps building up and up and up, right until the moment that the scene goes black and leaves the audience hanging, unsure if the darkness signals Tony's death or merely the end of the show. Fans of the show have endlessly debated the meaning of this final scene, and I still regularly end up discussing it with people, even though the finale is more than a decade old. Those saying Tony died often point to shot composition patterns of the scene, arguing that the moment the screen goes black should, according to the pattern, be a shot from Tony's perspective meaning Tony has died and his perspective is darkness. Others argue that Tony may very well be alive, and all the clues within the scene pointing towards his death are just symbols suggesting he will always live under the threat of death and will have to be worried and looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. I'll link a great video by Screen Prism in this video's description, which goes over the evidence in The Sopranos ending in detail and tries to tease out the broader life messages that show creator David Chase is trying to reveal through the ending. Two decades on, The Sopranos has aged remarkably well. It is still considered one of the greatest TV shows of all time, 
and it has gone on to inspire countless other shows and actors. For instance, Brian Cranston has cited Tony Soprano as an important influence on his character, Walter White, in another of my favorite shows, AMC's drug-dealing drama, Breaking Bad. With all that said, I hope you'll do something to celebrate this fantastic show's anniversary. Whether you re-watch it from start to finish, as I recently did, read some of the new books or interviews about it, or even just travel to some of the hundreds of filming locations around the state. The Sopranos was largely filmed on location right here in New Jersey, after all. For instance, you can see the Patterson Great Falls, where mobsters throw someone over a bridge to his death in Season 1. You can also enjoy your own dramatic meal at Holston's Ice Cream Parlor in Bloomfield, and buy some Sopranos merchandise while you're there. You can drive by the Satin Doll Strip Club in Lodi, which was used as a mafia front establishment called the Bada Bing on the show. You can even take a guided tour of Sopranos filming locations, which will show you many, many more sites than I can list in this video. Another thing you can do to celebrate is watch some of the other shows that Sopranos actors have been in. For instance, two critically acclaimed shows with Sopranos actors are Nurse Jackie, in which Edie Falco, Carmela's actress, stars as a drug-addicted nurse, and Boardwalk Empire, in which Steve Buscemi, Tony Blundetto's actor, stars as a corrupt, prohibition-era Atlantic City political machine boss. Whatever you do to celebrate this momentous anniversary, please have a good time. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for more videos on New Jersey culture, history, tourism tips, and geography. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.